When I say the dust is global, I truly mean that. When, when I started relaying these stories, I've gotten more and more women send me story times from all over the globe. And I share them just so that you know that you go to another place, you're still going to encounter a different version of a Dusty. So this one is a maple flavored Dusty. All right, so here she goes. I'm starting at the end, and then I'm gonna give a little bit of background on Canada, and then I'll tell some more of her story. I'm going a little out of order from what she gave me. She says, well, in my case, personally, it was a bait and switch. We talked about everything before getting married, and he swore up and down, he was going to be an equal partner, and he was, until we had a house and two kids. You know what I mean? Then he became an angry king baby who played video games all day and yelled at me for not making enough money, and the house we were about to lose wasn't clean enough. I was broke, and my credit was ruined. It took me two years to be stable enough to kick him out. Like I said, pretty much the exact same version, no matter where you are. They change as soon as they get you stuck with a house or kids or marriage. It is This story could be t told many different ways. So this woman reaches out to me yesterday. She lets me know that there is dust in um, Quebec and wants to know if I want to know the details. And I'm like, cool, drop the deets. This is what she says. She says, cool. So Quebec is fairly distinct from the rest of Canada as the visible majority is white, French speaking and Catholic as opposed to white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. There was also a major societal shift starting in the 60s, the Quiet Revolution, where people started rejecting the church, rejecting the church and its values. So when I say Catholic, I meant that in a social sense rather than a religious one. As a result of the societal shift, Quebec is generally more progressive and left-leaning than most other Canadian provinces. Although, just like everywhere else, the further you are from major cities, the more conservative people are. Other interesting facts, statistically, Quebec fathers spend more time with their children, 50-50 custody in cases of separation is the norm, and the rate of cohabitation without marriage is the highest in the country. She says, however, the divorce and separation rates are the same as the rest of North America, and just like the rest of North America, 70% of them are initiated by the woman in heterosexual couples. The most frequent complaint, she works full time, just like he does, and then comes home um, to the second shift. That part seems to be identical every freaking where. Absolutely. It's absolutely the same. All of this leads me to something that is very concerning to me. Generally, I applaud walking away from societal norms and expectations in institutions such as marriage. However, Quebec's legal system is a weird chimera of the French civil code and English common law. And family law is one of the things that is under the civil code, meaning the common law marriages do not exist. After cohabitating for a certain amount of time, you can get your, get your partner on your employer's group benefits and file your taxes jointly. But legally, that is, if you separate, Children are protected under the law and both parents are legally obligated to provide for them. But the separated partners have no rights, obligations, or recourses towards one another. There is no such thing as common family property or assets if you weren't married. This wouldn't be a problem if the wage gap didn't exist and mothers weren't the ones making career sacrifices for their family. But as things are, it leads to major inequalities and financial abuse. And while there are women who don't want to get married, who is the most likely to say they don't believe in marriage? Men, of course. If you dig a little, you find out that it isn't really about not believing in marriage, though. It's greed. It's always greed. They don't want to share their retirement fund or they'll say, oh, you know, it'll be easier if we don't owe each other anything, meaning their ex won't be able to ask for alimony or debt repayment. And if her name wasn't on the mortgage, she'll have She'll have helped you pay for it for years and then have nothing to show for it. Absolutely. That's what these women that keep moving in with these dudes, paying, 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 investing in these men, and they end up with nothing except a lighter bakery. She says, when things are going well, they make all kinds of promises. And then when things start to fall apart, they forget those promises real quick. I refuse to have children without being married. So I was able to sue for things he legally owed me but refused to hand, hand over. But if we hadn't been married, I would have had no legal recourse whatsoever. 
we're talking over $20,000. I know some people will call me a gold digger, but the family assets weren't just his, were they? Absolutely not. Women put into these houses as well. Women work. Women deserve to have a piece of it when it ends. Okay, so she says, so there it is. The Dusties will take your money and your free labor and keep everything and is seen as completely normal. I say it's sadistic, nearly psychotic. It's like, how do we walk away from traditional institutions but keep exploiting women? So she gives me a little bit more details about her life. She says she was married for eight years, now divorced for seven. I'm still single by choice. I have a good career, hobbies, a social life. I'm happy and thriving and have a wonderful relationship with my sons who are nine and 13. And then I say, is your ex active with the kids? She says, we have 50-50 custody and I don't get involved when the kids are with him. So he has to be. Kicking him out forced him to grow up and be an adult and father, basically. Sometimes with these people, you have got to actually extract yourself out of the situation and make them be an adult, just like this woman did. And going back to the very first thing that she said, this was a bait and switch. He said that they were going to be equal partners and then things changed once they got a house and two kids. And so they talked about this. And I just want to keep hammering that home that these dudes do change. And I am going to, I am going to drop a video. This woman is talking about the reasons why women initiate so many divorces. Women initiate divorces because these people are not helping out where they're supposed to be helping out. And what is the purpose in having them around if they're not going to participate in the lives of our children and be an actual partner. So if you're on my TikTok page, that will be embedded in the comment section. So just hit play. She makes some uh, amazing points. If you're on my YouTube page, it's coming next. 90% of all divorces are women leaving men. Unpack that for us. <laughs> I looked up the research and it's 70% of women that are initiating divorce. Would you work at a company that only had a 30% retention rate for their employees? 70% of the employees are leaving the company? Would you think, oh man, these employees suck? Or would you think, what the hell's wrong with that employer that they can't keep any employees? So then I put my researcher cap on and I read a lot of articles from psychologists who are doing all this marriage counseling to see what's really going on. And hands down, the women are mad. They feel tricked. They get into this marriage thinking that they're going to have a partner and they're going to have support. And the three biggest reasons that women are walking away from marriage is number one, their partner isn't emotionally intelligent and doesn't know how to emotionally connect. So there's no actual friendship between the husband and the wife. Number two, the women are carrying all of the mental load and emotional labor for the entire family and it's exhausting. And number three, they're just not accepting abuse anymore. And abuse is defined as someone who tries to control you, manipulate you, or neglect you. And the statistics show that 50% of women, once they get divorced, don't remarry. They're done. But 70% of men will remarry. Because studies also show that marriage is much more beneficial for men. They live longer and they're able to make more money in their jobs because someone's holding things down at the home fort. And marriage is not beneficial for women and tend to rely on women to do all of the household labor, to do all of the mental load of making doctor's appointments, purchasing the things for the house, doing the cooking, the cleaning, and that the women are carrying the emotional labor as well meaning they're always trying to initiate connection and help regulate everybody's emotions better. I'll also add that only 27% of women say that they regret getting a divorce, whereas 39% of men say they regret getting a divorce. So the institution just isn't working for women much anymore. And so much of that has to do with the fact that men are struggling to regulate their emotions, to be emotionally intelligent, and to know how to emotionally connect with a woman especially around the area of having empathy. So that's my interpretation of the statistics. What's yours?
Women on these social media platforms in video and various posts speak about being married single mothers where they were basically married but still doing everything. And so some of them talk about the fact that once they separated or divorced, they had much more free time and energy. And so when you separate from somebody, I, I certainly believe in getting the custody arrangement and child support arrangement put in writing. I believe in going to court. I believe that, you know, they deserve to have their children and you need your time when the kids are with their daddies. So I want to talk about this, um, this would I be the a-hole thread. It is a year old, but I believe that we still need to talk about it. So this man said, would I be the a-hole if I asked my ex-wife to change our custody agreement? Okay, <laughs> so they did decide that he was the a-hole. And like I said, this is a year old. He says, my, ex and, my ex-wife and I divorced last year. We have two kids under six. We worked out custody. I get them every weekend because I moved too far from their schools to have them any weekdays. I hate, I hate it that all my days off are with kids. I love them, but I want to go out and meet someone. And I can't do that when I have kids every weekend. She gets the weekend off to do what she wants. And surprise, she has a boyfriend while I'm still single. I want to enjoy some of my free time to go out with my friends to do whatever I want, but I can't. I'm jealous of my ex and I hate it. I can't tell anyone in life because they will call me awful. I haven't gotten laid since my ex, and at this rate, I never will. So I want to ask her if I can get them every other weekend. Instead, I know she's going to give me hell and call me a bad dad, but I want some free time too. Now, keep in mind, in the course of a month, there are approximately eight days that are during the, I mean, during the month. And so that means that she has these people (laughs) all of the rest of the days. And he can't manage to meet somebody on his off days, but she has been able to meet somebody and she only has eight days off during the during the week. She approximately has these kids, five, let's just say five times four, five times four is 20. And she is managing to go to work, get them to school, manage their day to day, their doctor's appointments. She's the hands on default parent, but he is wanting her to do more because he needs to meet somebody. He is still focusing on his needs and she's still managing to do things and have a life outside of him. This is the reason why these people simply need to have their kids more because they don't understand the day-to-day. They they have not had to do the day-to-day because the women are the ones that are pulling 90 to 95% of everything and they're not having to actually actively participate in the lives of their children. I, to this, I say absolutely freaking not. Stop giving in to these people. Stop making things easier for these people because when it becomes too easy for them, that's the reason why they keep taking and taking and taking and taking because they haven't had to learn how to do things on their own. You get stronger at things. You learn how to do things by continuously flexing that muscle. Women are able to multitask simply because we multitask a lot. You know, (laughs) we're able to do, we're able to juggle multiple things. We're able to calculate how long things will take because we have done it enough. Make these people do it more. Take yourself out of the equation and make these people do it more. You guys let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, share.